All right. First news is out of China. China is building car parks and playgrounds over Uyghur Muslim graveyards to eradicate ethnic groups' identity. Uh, this is absolutely terrible. We've been reporting on this for years, what China is doing to the Uyghur Muslims in their area. They're wiping out them in uh, concentration camps and everything else. So now on top of that, they're going through um, the their cemeteries and graveyards. They're completely wiping them out. China has said that they are uh, removing the bodies to other places. Um, however, people who have seen them digging up these cemeteries to create parks, playgrounds, car parks, um, they're, they're actually seeing bits of human remains left behind. So we don't actually know what is going on with the remains of the people who are buried there before. Um, and yeah, so they're, they're doing this the way to just completely wipe the people out um, altogether, dead and alive. And this is absolutely just horrifying. The United States has stepped forward and, and said that there will be um, travel bans going on for all the Chinese officials who are um, in charge of this. However, you know, we'll see that when we get to it. Finally, the United States is doing something because, I mean, it's too little, mm -hmm. it's too little, too late, but it's better late than never. And it's actually, the United States is right now at least the only country that is taking a position against China. But it's very late. I wish they did this a little bit more. And I wish right now they did something stronger. But by the way, how does this, um, how does this work? Why, uh, eradicating ethnic groups' identity by wiping off, you know, by covering their graveyards, turning into um parks and play car parks and playgrounds like why would that why would that why would that uh, eradicate an identity don't you like i mean islam is really good at making identities based on being the victim i mean that has worked for, in their uh, favor many many times wouldn't this create a, just a, like for at least the most of china wouldn't that give them a genesis narrative of you know the the very popular victim genesis narrative like what would would that how does how does this how do they think this is going to eradicate their uh, their identity it just gives them a different identity based on victimhood wouldn't it do that like i don't well what yeah. What I think they're doing here is, you know, with people, the Muslims who are living there, they're going through brainwashing camps um, where they're coming out, you know, fully Chinese, indoctrinated, no religion, um, bots leaving their camp. So if they get rid of all of their old, for example, um, they talked about a prominent poet um, from the, the Yugar um, area. Um and, and he's, he's huge to the Muslims in this area. Uh, and they, they wiped off where he was buried. They don't know where his remains are. So it's as if he didn't exist. If they're not allowed to read the texts, if they're not allowed to uh, remember even without being scared of having to go back to these camps, they aren't allowed to even speak of their past. So if there's no memory of their past, there's no text of their past, there's nothing to remind them, but Happiness Park, which was built over this Happy poet memorial, wow. um, then that's how they are eradicating them. I don't know if this is, this is gonna, my bets on this is gonna backfire and I mean, I mean, they might be counting at a backfire because if there is a backfire and the backfire comes in a form of an attack or a terrorist attack, then China is like, yeah, see, this is why we're doing what we're doing. But I don't know if, if I mean, China is, the, the amount of control they have in their countries is extremely, is surprised, like, I don't know if, when you, if you guys saw when, with regards to, getting all these Chinese governments to stop working with company uh, with Western companies that have any shown any support for the Hong Kong protests, right? The the number of, com you know, the Chinese companies, the way they all folded and the way they all immediately cut ties based on co the Chinese government's request or demand, more accurately, the f the, how fast all these private companies, so-called private companies in China, uh, cut ties so fast. It's, it's just so... You know, unfortunately, so impressive how much control China has over its economy, like how fast they get to do that. So if anybody could do anything like this, it would be China. But I don't know, maybe in the short term, it looks impressive. But I bet you this is going to I bet this is going to backfire in a more cultural way, more than a terrorist way. Like this is I mean, think about I, I don't understand, I don't think China, China might be Chinese government might be very 
overconfident over their ability because they can see how much control they have they might be overconfident but overall they're losing the narrative like for example if you so they must not understand how this could backfire given what we see they do um, when it comes to controlling the narratives in other areas right so what, what i'm saying is that i don't think china knows how to get rid of identities or destroy narratives based on their performance on trying to destroy the pro hong kong narrative right uh, they must not understand how this works because when you, when somebody tweets again um, supports hong kong protesters right and then you go and say okay let's cut ties with this company and this company says like oh sorry china sorry china like oh, okay like let's fire this guy oh this guy doesn't represent us that story becomes way worse to china than the original tweet right so given that this is such an obvious thing for somebody like me that don't doesn't have pr experience doesn't have media training didn't go to school to understand like i'm pretty sure they have people that they that they pay sh a ton of money as consultants and all that stuff and they couldn't figure this out that obviously you cutting t making us or western companies give in to your demands is going to it's going to be so much more anti-chinese it's going to look worse to the world and it's going to you have promoted anti-chinese narratives way more than the hong kong protesters by doing that right so given that they don't understand that i question their ability to understand how like a lot of people are like oh good job china you're anti-islam you're anti-islam this is what is needed yeah i don't think they understand how this works i don't think they understand how to fight islam and i i keep telling people and i keep saying hey china hire me i'll show you how to defeat islam the best way to defeat islam is to be nice to muslims be friends to muslims don't don't you know the best way to promote islam is to be uh, i mean if you if you're not a de enough decent human being to just be nice to people just for the sake of being nice to people at least be nice to muslims because that's the best way of defeating islam at least uh, if that if that's what your intention is right um because you know this is what christian mission a lot of christian missionaries understand by the way uh, and they're right about that like i i you know i listen to a lot of uh, podcasts i mean i listen to a lot of mm, opinions that of people that i disagree with i like i listen to far right far left christian islamic content and i used to listen listen to a podcast by these christian missionaries and they used to say like one, one of them that was very effective they said like listen the first one year that you meet somebody you don't even mention the bible of jesus to them you just you just show them how how good of a person you are and you just help them you show up at their home you help them move their stuff if there's something is broken you go fix them you don't mention jesus you don't mention the bible they will ask you at some point right and like wow these people really understand how this works right and you know the, if you go and destroy mosques if you go and tell muslims that you need to eat pork and you if you put them in concentration concentration camps that will never destroy islam you're promoting islam this is what makes islam stronger okay if you want to defeat islam you go as an atheist or as a non-muslim and an, as an anti-islam activist as somebody that wants islam to end and then you show muslims that you are a fellow human beings that could be friends with them and th and they see that oh it's possible to be so anti-islam and still be a decent human being that's the best seed of doubt that you could introduce to any muslim right there. that's the most effective way that you could you could introduce doubt in people even if they don't doubt islam at least they will learn how to get along with people that they, they disagree with their ideas and you say like oh yeah sure i mean that never works you're being an you know ideologue yeah yeah sure rainbows and butterflies let's hold hand and sing kumbaya well i can tell you it has worked we have an atheist republic we have seen what works the most we have 15 years of experience we have the largest atheist community online around the world and we have we're responsible for thousands of thousands of people abandoning their religion including islam and we know what works best we've seen what works best so uh, china if you want to hire me i'm available uh for hire and i will destroy islam in in, in china for you uh, and i will do it in a way that doesn't violate anyone's human rights
Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.